Bonjour, hi, welcome to the stream everybody. I'm Frank Boucher and today I'm not the host, but I'm not the, the guest. I think we're both hosts, hosts Host. and guests. Yeah, I'm both hosting and guesting. Yeah, exactly. So today I'm joined with, I got it, good side, Jason Han. <laughs> <laughs> You're over here and Frank. Exactly. <laughs> we should shake hands. Um, my my stream buddy. Uh, we decided to do a little bit different today. Uh, kind of pause from like having a guest and everything a little bit to explain some changes that we are thinking. Also, The show is really for like the, for you, for the communities, for the developers, DevOps, IT people, ops. I don't want to put too much title of, of, of a person because I will probably forget one and someone will say, oh, that show is not for me. So today is a little bit, we want to answer questions. So we want that very interactive. Uh, I tweet earlier today, uh, say, hey, ask me questions. So I had a few questions. I know it's Monday morning for a lot of us, so, you know, getting back slowly. But uh, I think it could be very interesting. If it works, we could repeat the occasion, maybe uh, pack a few uh, of questions and do a, like an answer question type of uh, stream. But that's the point of today. We want to we wanna explain some changes and, and we'll be doing things differently. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, sounds good. And virtual high five to Sean. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us again. And uh, yeah, just like Frank mentioned, um, uh, you know, we wanted to kind of mix things up. We also wanted to pause for a minute and, and recognize those of you who have been watching and following along as we've been doing stuff on Microsoft Twitch uh, or Microsoft Developers Twitch channel. Um, as we've transitioned over to Learn TV and doing more stuff over there, Frank and I were involved with Ignite uh, just briefly towards the end of last week also. So we've been kind of just, you know, toying around with a few different things. And um, moving forward, we, we want to make sure that we address stuff that's actually helpful. You know, at the end of the day, we're hoping, we're hoping that you're all learning and, and new, learning new things, learning new skills, um, connecting with the right people and, and topics. And, and so we want to make sure, we're, yeah, oh, of course, have fun, lots of fun, um, but make sure that we're on track and, and giving you what you what you're looking for. So um, not only, you know, Frank mentioned um, he put something out on Twitter and, um, you know, anybody who wants to respond to that, uh, go take a look at that. And then um, also, you know, if you got questions, of course, throughout today, um, we'd love to hear them. We've got a few things already in mind about what we thought we'd go over. Um, But uh, yeah, definitely would love to hear from you some more on, on, um, on what we can do to you know, help you out, help you learn more, that kind of thing. I'm trying to adjust the, uh, my super banner, but it's, it's not clear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another thing, yeah, I was going to say, uh, other things that um, look a little bit different too is we've added some, some um, fancy new ticker scroller. I did. I'm trying. <laughs> Hold on, Azure unplug. It's, it's hard to uh, to put something that match. We need to work on our. Um, I think it's it's about time. Or we've been saying that for a long time, Jason. But uh, I think it's about time we uh, we work our own design. Yeah. Well, we kind of got something in the works right we started playing around with um a little bit of different background when we went live last week uh, at ignite um and uh, trying to think of some different ideas for yeah just the overall look and feel so question we have our first live question from code with sean is asking have you played with the azure biceps no <laughs> yeah, and I, I was just about to say, I no, but I'm not familiar with it, but I just looked it up and um, here I'll um, drop this link to you, Frank, so maybe we can share this with others. Oh, you could, you have access to the chat though, right? I do. I guess I can do that too. That should let me since I'm... I, I, I can totally do it for you, but you know. 
Yeah. Now see if the see if you can see the link. I added it in there. Yep. So if it, it allowed you in there. Okay. Oh, you're you're wearing pink today. Jason twenty four is in pink. I'm in pink today. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're pinkish. Oh, so, so it looks like it's um, as Sean was describing. This is just a GitHub repo, but it's a um, looks like an ARM template implementation doing domain specific language for deploying Azure resources declaredly. Yeah. So biceps okay. is uh, infrastructure infrastructure as code. Yeah. So it's a way to build and deploy to Azure. And ARM templates are hard to read. Uh, they are JSON, they are like, they can become very complex. Of course, a lot of time when we try to explain how to deploy using ARM template, we use very simple things because we want to focus on the ARM template, not the complexity of the solution you're deploying. So this way, a lot of time in the blogs, the videos, like, and I'm guilty of that. Like I did that many times because you want to focus on the arm, whatever you're trying to explain. But when you're using it in real life, it can become very verbose and everything. And it's a little bit complex to, uh, to use and to read, to understand. So the team decided to create Bicep. They start and it's like a full rewrite, rewrite of the solution. So it takes a lot of time. So I was aware of Biceps coming up. I did see some, you know, very uh, early kind of draft, draft of it, uh, but I didn't have the time to look into it. I was very busy. There's a series that I did about ARM and I was really busy working on those. So in my, and, and I didn't want to, you know, play with the two to be confused. So uh, now my recording of the ARM series are done, but it was Ignite. So Ignite now is done. So now I should be able to start playing with biceps and uh, provide the feedback to the team. But anyone who's inter interested can provide feedback. That's why they are doing it open source, right? So like if you want to try it and maybe like your ninja and arm template or in a Terraform or or like, you know, bash script, whatever. So trying that thing, you will be able to provide feedback or maybe like, well, you know what? You're a newbie. You always have been right click deploy. Now you would like to have something to, to be more in production style deployment. So try biceps and try to bring feedback to it. Um, be constructive, of course, uh, if you're just saying that it's it's trash or whatever like it, you're not helping but uh, the team will be super happy of any kind of feedback you're providing that's why they are doing it in the open source and we see that more and more at Microsoft uh, where the teams are doing working in also open space right we see that also with .NET doing that yeah a lot yeah so it's very exciting it looked very very promising I I'm looking forward to try it there's other things there's the I don't want to, there's other stuff, I will mention it later on the show, but uh, there's a lot of good things that have been announced and are interesting. Cool, yeah, I wasn't familiar with that, but uh, sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I, I just, just like one week, I think, before Ignite, uh, it has been like, oh, really? officially yeah. announced. Got it, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, super important stuff. I mean, that sounds a lot like the the type of stuff we were teaching at Ignite last year, just you know, not really, obviously not that tool, but introducing the ideas of infrastructure as code to more and more people, I think is super important. Yeah. And those ARM templates are, like you said, they're, they're not, once they get so kind of big, they're a little bit hard to make sense of, especially if you're not familiar with doing much YAML. Um, but I will say that the, the plugins in VS code have made a huge difference. Um, Lately, there have been some real, really nice enhancements that make it easy to, you know, kind of lynch your code, make sure everything's formatted right, syntactically, all that kind of stuff. So that's really, I, I would say, reduced my frustration with ARM, with ARM templates um, by using that, that plugin. So I have a, either way. 
Yeah, no, the extension before you needed to have. Uh, I'm really bad at typing as I'm speaking. Uh, <laughs> before you needed to have like two or three extension, and now like they move stuff part of the official one. And a good was a good chunk of it was part of the snippet part was yeah. done previously by uh, an Azure MVP, and his name uh, is it Tom. I forgot his name, but he was uh, an MVP. So uh, it's pretty cool that the team decided to take his code and uh, kind of bring it inside the uh, official extension. I'm just looking. Yep. I want to share with you the series of blog I did on um, DevTO about the learning Azure. So if people, uh, not Azure, but the uh, ARM template. I got it. share that so right now there's 10 uh, post video it's also attached to a github repo where you have the code snippet where you have oh I can you know what let, let me kind of I will you know shame shame plug but uh, it was a lot of work and I think it could be useful <laughs> am I sharing my screen I ruined it I tried to put in a link and it didn't work I was trying to put in the link to the extension here, but if you just go to the marketplace and, and search for Azure Resource Manager Tools, you'll find that one. Oh, I was talking about, yeah, okay, I will share that after, but I think I also share that inside the, the series. But uh, ah. don't look, the num part number two <laughs> is before number one, but after that, they are all in the same order. So every video, let's say, uh, I click the first one here, so there's the list, there's the video, and that's our, uh, our friend Neil here uh, talking about the extension. That's why I, I didn't put the, just the extension. I like his hat. Yeah, like is it the same as yours? I don't know, I think it might be. So uh, you have the, uh, the video available here, a little blog post also talking about the extension. This one is to get you started, so just about like how to create your first ARM template. So, and after that, all the other uh, videos are talking about, okay, let's talk about the variable, where they are useful, how can you use them, real case scenario. Okay, now let's talk about the functions, uh, the looping, the reference, all those things. So very, very interesting. And the last one that was published two weeks ago, I think, is uh, how to get a template from something that already exists. So, and there are still, should I spoil it? Two video coming. <laughs> and yeah, everything. I, also, yep. Uh, go ahead. I was just saying that everything is also in GitHub. So, you have everything in GitHub with the code snippet and everything. Yeah, what I was going to say is I love the ability to deploy with the big blue button, deploy to Azure using the ARM template from right inside of a GitHub. Yeah, repo. I use that a lot of time. That's like the best when you can just make it so so it's easy. Somebody can just press a button and then does the rest of it. Yeah. And, and, and right now I'm struggling. Well, you know, my uh, URL shortener, Jason, I know you're using it also. But uh, I was using that to deploy that thing. But uh, with the new version, in fact, the version one is read mostly ready. Uh, I won't be able to use that button anymore. I will, will need to clone it because I want to use the static web app and for that I still need a github action so it needs mm -hmm. to run on the owner github cannot be all from my github but uh, mm. yeah that will be that will, yeah that will be very mm. interesting yeah is there some way we can pass in a parameter for that I'm not sure. I did try. I reached out to the team, but it was just before Ignite, so they were very, 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 very busy. <laughs> we know why. They announced like the preview and everything. I didn't know, so they yeah. they they have they probably sh found me very annoying since I was like, asking exactly <laughs> where they they were about to uh, to share. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, I did try, so like it's it's working very well. My problem right now is I want anybody to deploy it very easily because I think a URL shortener is very uh, practical, like it's useful. 
Mm. But it uh, doesn't mean you're an expert in deploying and stuff like that. So I want it very easy to deploy. But I think yeah. I got it now. I will be like clone. But you know, it wasn't the some of the recent. Like was doing configuration, and now that yeah. Git things, I will need to find a way to to make those change inside of it. So I'm like, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, and I don't know how many versions behind I am on the deployment that I've got running of yours. I know you've lo you've made a lot of changes, and wasn't some of it to um, reduce the cost? Also, well, wasn't that's, just that's version one will be the first version that will be really cost efficient got it yeah well, i mean it's not been that expensive to run it but you know it's hard to make the argument of using using it over some other ones out there but now i think with the new version it's yeah. oh yeah it will be like it's totally different. two three bucks a month probably less i just i'm keeping some buffer here <laughs> yeah it depends right if yeah, you are great. an enterprise and you have like thousands and thousands of uh of clicks and things like that or url or you know many different things yeah maybe it will be a little bit more expensive but then like it's it, it was a tool that we created online for fun but also has like it's useful like right. I, I like those projects where you're building something you're learning you're having fun and then like you could use it it's not just like yeah, yeah i did a hello world <laughs> I mean, that was the, the main thing for me is I needed a, uh, a new URL shortener, shortener and I knew you had been working on one. And so it was kind of fun to, to get it up and going and, and, uh, and then kind of give you feedback on a few things and get straightened out on, on like what I wasn't doing right. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get the, get the, uh, the thing kind of upgraded to the newer, the newer tech, the newer stuff. Yeah. I'll have to do that next week maybe. Uh, well, I think next week I will have probably uh, something maybe a little bit rough because it always take like two, three deployment that are not mine because I have everything in my head. But and then like oh, I patch the missing part of the documentation or add little, you know, finesse in the script. So it's a little bit more smart. But uh, next week, I think we'll be ready to uh, to have something interesting and then we'll We'll start working on another project. Not sure yet what it will be, but you know, maybe we could have some suggestions. What are the options? Yeah, is there anything on the uh, consideration list so far? Could be a game. <laughs> could be a game. We could have talked about well, I some have game ideas. That, yeah, I have one tool that I'm, I, I start doing on my um, on my stream. It was a tool that used Azure. Azure containers. So I'm happy today. We had one question about that, and it's my uh, reading notes generator. So every time I found an article interesting online, I don't like to read on the screen. So I send that to my uh, my Kindle, my e-reader, and um, I read there. I put in notes, and at the end of the week, uh, yeah, the end of the week, the way it's saved inside the document is just a flat file. So I have a process that take that file and generate a draft of a, a blog but mm -hmm. then like go back pick up the url and stuff like that so i want to have an end-to-end -end solution where i keep all those the information so i don't need you know on sunday night say okay what was the url paste it find again the like the author information and mash up that like so i want to process i'm planning to use azure function azure logic app docker container um and i needed an Static. interface so i want to do it and i was waiting the blazer web assembly mm -hmm. so now that it's there i will be doing that and i'm using i think cosmo i think we picked cosmo db as a, a data storage right okay and maybe you just mentioned this, but because some of the recent announce announcements, we can do um, C sharp as a function. Yeah. Well, as function, that was for a while. The, new, uh, okay. the, the novelty the here is the static web app. Right. That's now possible to do it. Like uh, it's kind of, it was possible before, but you were like, you know, going by the back door by yourself, kind of, you know, patching mm -hmm. things. Now you just go in the portal. I want a new static web app. It will be a Blazor thing. 
pointing your GitHub repo, and it's working. I could we could uh, demo it later on if people are interested. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I I myself would love to see it. I haven't been in there and looked at that since the release. Pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Saw the chat. If you want some question, what name <laughs> topic you want to talk on, I will give you questions. We choose our area of expertise, and Sean will provide a question. Okay. <laughs> Another thing I had was also uh, use your voice. It's a f kind of an application, a far run application, and it's to share project or thoughts for the community. So the community could decide what's the next one. Let's say for, I, I was planning to use that for my YouTube channel or my stream. So people could pitch their ideas. That would, what could be a good project. Uh, and then other could vote on it and stuff like that and like when I need inspiration or I need a topic Let's say for now like it could be all our questions. We, we go to that page Take the top 10 questions and answer them and stuff like that, but it could also for the projects So I start doing that. Uh, I was trying to do uh, entity framework So I needed to learn entity framework, but uh, then Ignite last year I think started and I was I was kind of busy <laughs> <laughs> with the traveling and everything so that project kind of uh, paused for a little while so we could go back into that or like I mentioned yep. like a game uh, I don't know if uh, how many of you were there last week when we did the, the special episode Ignite, Ignite recap mm -hmm. we played to Kahoot how do you say again that name Ka Kahoot Kahoot K-A-H-O-T that IT. And honestly, I really like that game. Yeah, it was fun. In the chat, like if like, let us know if you were there. If not, if not, we could play that again. If you play that game and if you liked it or whatever, like if you if you think that could be interesting to have every once in a while in the stream or maybe at every show, let us know what's your thoughts about that. Uh, we want to do more interaction with you. So, hey, uh, one one thing too before before I forget, there was a few things we wanted to make sure we shared and um, and just chatted about too. Is there was the challenge to the exams challenge? What was that called, Frank? That just came out with Ignite that goes through October fifth. The skill challenge. That's right, the skill challenge. Want to share your screen? Yeah, let me see if I can find the link first. Because that was, okay, so you wanna you wanna answer the first question we had, then, and then on Twitter. Yeah, let me get to that. Um, let's see, share my because screen that, here. That was, that, that was the like, oh, it was in French the question, so you won't probably be able to. Uh... <laughs> okay. Well, um, you see my screen here now. I didn't share it, but I can if you want. Oh yeah, go ahead. We'll, we'll take a look at what we um, what we saw on Twitter this morning after you put out your question. Frank, looking looking funny here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what kind of help can we help you with uh, in, t in terms of any current projects? Is there something we can clarify? Something we can do a demo on? And uh, one of the things that came up here, and Frank, you can I'm sure read this much better than I can, um, but essentially it comes down to um, the certification around AZ 900 and, and what kind of preparation there is for that. And um, Frank and I have gone through and done the Azure AZ 900 fundamentals exam already. Uh, it was about this time last year, I think, is when we were starting to get ready for it. Um, and then since then, we've been kind of helping other people get prepared for it and sharing everything we could. And then we just found out this past week during Ignite that there's this new uh, scaling challenge that Microsoft has put out. That um, I think it's right here, the Microsoft Ignite Cloud Skilling Skills Challenge, which, correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, if you go through this and you do... Um, just one. Just one of these things, then you are then qualified to take one of the certification exams. Yeah. So or is it just they, AZ they will have They will have prices if you do all the challenge and everything. Like uh, they will, you're, you have chance to win some stuff. But if you do at least one, you will get guaranteed a voucher for an exam. 
for a certification. So that's pretty cool because those exams are not cheap. Yeah, that's a huge thing. I mean, um, you know, anytime you can get access to a just even free preparation for an exam, I think it's great. Um, so the fact that they've got these uh, little skills challenges here, which uh, honestly, I, I have to imagine they're going to be kind of fun to go through as well. Frank, I shared the link with you so that you could drop it in chat. Oh, because you don't see the chat anymore. Okay, um, no, I no, just need to drag it over here so I can see both of them. There we go. Yeah, so anyway, this Microsoft Ignite uh, Cloud Skills Challenge I think is super cool and um, everybody should go check it out. But what it does uh, essentially, or not what it does, some of the other things that are related to this that we wanted to maybe talk about more specifically to that tweet around AZ900 is, um, of course, I got the link here to the exam itself. So I guess uh, we can put this in the chat as well. Just over here. I lost it already. The exam itself. Should have made short links for these though, huh? Yeah, we should have, huh? Make it easier to uh, to read. Hold on, we have a question from Tyndall asking, if I say legacy web form project and attempting to move it from IaaS to PaaS, yeah, nay or rewrite? Okay, so it's a web forms project. Well, no, the you... web form project, there's like you can always run it inside a container. So you would be running in PaaS, but you're still in the container uh, to be running fully. Fully uh, PaaS, I think there's let me find a there's a um, that's a good question, Tinal. There's an application that will help you to migrate. Uh, I will analyze your code. For example, a lot of time in those applications, we were using the object sessions. It was a very common prep, uh, practice where you like you're saving information. Let's say you're a, you know a shop like you're selling stuff people could put you know things in their cart and the cart was part of the session it was making a lot of sense because you are talking to one server but when you move in azure then it could be in multiple server and usually at least two because you want to play safe so now maybe you created your session your cart in one server and you're on the other one so you will have the impression that you know you just lost <laughs> your cart so to avoid that there's a way to do it and the tool will highlight those problematic and probably explain how to solve them in the example of the session it's a one line of code to change in the config file other configuration could be a little bit more uh, demanding but the tool is really nice so let me find it for you because there's a good one for that and yep so i have it and it even works with php so it's app my app migration tools and you know what we're starting to have a bunch of pages but let me share my screen or we'll remove obs first It's a very uh, changing scenes today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the tool. So it is at appmigration.microsoft.com. The link is just in the chat. And by the way, if you're watching that on uh, YouTube in uh, video on demand on things like that, I will put the, all the link. We will put all the link into the, the description. So this tool is pretty cool. What it does, it, it will first assess your solution. Would it be in PHP or .NET? And then 
uh, it will help you to migrate it and you could download it to do it very offline if you don't want to expose your code and stuff like that so you could de deploy an agent that will be running on the like your machine and stuff like that will analyze the code generate kind of a report where everything that is could be an issue like and prioritize and stuff like that so it's a very 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 nice tool to uh, to have so Tyndall if you want to go uh, pass it's possible have a look to that tool first and that you may be surprised that it will work flawlessly or mostly flawlessly um, but then it depends sometimes some module or part need to be rewrite to be scalable a little bit more but at least phase phase one of your project migration could be just doing that and after that if you want to really embrace the cloud and really follow that curve of demand where like you can scale up and down to be super cost efficient when like there is no demand middle of the night nobody's going on your website so you would like to have as minimum you know just heartbeat <laughs> that's it to save it every penny and then when like it's like high peak demand scale up so like everybody has a great experience it's possible if you go full full pass um so yeah so like but that could be your first step into that journey never heard of that tool looks pretty cool yeah well, in fact we did uh mud 20 i think in uh, ignite last last year uh we were doing a, a demo of that and even this year also we did i think it's a uh, mud 20 if you go and in the all the recording of the ignite session there's a demo showing like brief it's, like it's a session that is 45 minutes so it's kind of quick to show a migration and everything but we show i think it was mod 10 mod 20 mod 30 it's the migration using those tool moving the database moving the code and all those things pretty cool and it will be available one of my colleagues uh told me it was it will be available in multiple languages so if english is not your first language then even better because you will have the same video available in different languages uh, yeah, i wonder frank do you know when those videos are going to be available to they everyone are to watch? already i think are they uh, I'm just thinking they might it might be ready by now yeah yeah well i start watching like remember last week i was mentioning that i need to do some catch up <laughs> like, <laughs> i watched like uh not even, I think I watched two videos. Uh, I think if you go at my my ignite, I forgot. Like, let's let's try it like that. Yeah, that sounds right. Could... Microsoft.com. Yeah. So... And right there, we see our friend Sonia, who I was just talking about earlier. And able yeah so i was watching one right. session with uh, with scott and uh, i think if you go on video explore on the man well, if i put the code mod 10 does it do i found it no What's the title of it? Uh, I forgot. It's in the. Mo it's a learning path. I'm not sure if those are ready yet. Oh, ask an expert. But net modernization. Do you recall which day it was on? No. Well, it looks like a few of them are in there. Quite a bit. Oh, migration is a hot topic. Or, yeah. worst case, you can always have a look to the last year one. So if you go do aka.ms slash mittt, I was the Ignite the Tour back when we could travel. Everything was in, the, in GitHub for that one and inside the modernization of web application. 
So I will put that page here or aka.ms slash what I said, <laughs> M-I-T-T-T. -T. Uh, those are the session. So we had like migrating the web application. So that's the one, mod 10 and then moving your database, enhancing. So in those, you have the code snippet, the video showing how to do it and everything. Let's say I take this one. So you have everything, 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 the demo are there. Uh, very interesting to do. But this year we'll really focus on that app. This one here, I think it was creating a VM instead. Uh, this year it was really PaaS. So I think this year will be more uh, close to what Tyndall was asking for. Yeah, I'm kind of surfing through all the different videos. There's quite a few things on, on migration from the video on demand. Oh, did we did we just get raid? Yeah, Code Live raiding us with a party of 37. Sorry I missed that. Welcome raiders, welcome. Let's go uh, <laughs> side by side. There it is. So welcome everybody. How was your uh, your your uh, stream? What what were you doing over there? Code it live. <laughs> awesome. Welcome aboard. We're just having fun today. It's a uh, different episode than usual today uh, we are both hosting and both uh, being a guest so we are switching from one screen to the other uh, answering your questions about Azure so if you have if you're struggling with the tech in Azure you're not sure you would like to have clarification uh, we were just talking about um, how to migrate an application and if it was making sense to migrate or if we should rewrite it uh, we briefly touch also the uh, certification. We should finish that topic because we're jumping from... I'm good to do that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Being squirreled. Uh, <laughs> Looks like they were chatting about Blazor before they came and joined us, Frank. We were, uh, I love it. I love it. We were it. just talking about Blazor ourselves. Yeah. What were you... Oh, but Ed Charbonneau was there. So, of course, they were talking about Blazor. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so uh, pretty cool. So what were we doing with um, Blazor? Ed Charbonneau was the presenter. Whoa, lucky you. <laughs> do you know Ed Charbonneau, uh, Jason? Maybe you don't. I don't know. I don't know if I do. So uh, Ed Charbonneau, he, uh, he work at Tilleric now, right? we look at yeah yeah and um so tilleric they build a bunch of uh, controls and stuff like that so for example a nice grid or uh, charts or uh, a lot of control for different languages interface for web and uh, it's been really doing plenty of development and demos and stuff like that and he's been also working very close with the blazer team to make sure Tillery control works great on Blazor, and they are, and they are awesome. Also, by the way, yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah, looked at them for my uh, my project I'm doing, but um, yeah, they are no community, awesome. so I didn't. Pick well, welcome, them. welcome, Ed. Nice to meet you, and and everyone else that's joined us from the raid. It's good to have you here. Oh, uh, link are disabled, uh, uh, Ed Charbonneau. You are pointing on Telerik. I, I have no problem. Or just paste it so it doesn't look like a URL. <laughs> but uh, okay, yeah, we'll ping you because the like the problem is not me having a license. Uh, it was, uh, but that's a little bit far from uh, this show. But uh, the project is open source, and I want people to use the project without having to pay a license. And uh, so that's most of the time that's where I have problem with those tools. And I totally understand that at some point you need to sales those control. 
but uh, it's not just for me showing it it's for other to use it but anyway but i will ping you hey dave hey dave curious drive bunch of people wow excellent so should we go back to the uh, az900 Jason. Yeah, we can go back and, and show what we were sharing with the uh, with the group previously. Right. Pick things up from there. But, so I uh, share again your screen. Go for it. Okay. Let me know also if the music is too loud. I usually I do a sound check, but I didn't. Wait, what are we listening to? Because I don't get to hear it. Uh, it's lo-fi. I'm just a little beat. Okay. So when we don't talk, it's it's not emptiness. Right. It's not the no. void. Exactly. Yeah, we were just talking about the AZ900 exam earlier, and, and well, that in in conjunction with the um, uh, where did it go? The cloud skill, the cloud skills challenge here, and that if you um, just go through and complete a couple of these challenges, or really just one challenge, then you can go in and, and take one of these certification exams free of charge. And the AZ900 is the one that Frank and I did. Um, which I think is a good starting point. I wouldn't say it's easy. Would you, Frank? Like I, I, I had to study and I, I had to prepare, but it's a good place to start. And I, and I think it's actually a prerequisite for some of the others too. I think it's a like it's not like it's not a difficult exam. But I've been doing Azure for ten years, so I did touch a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, the more Azure is growing, the more there's some area that I don't do anymore. So for me, like it was a really good refresh. I felt the exam was honest, not like crazy question. I know mm. like one of the first uh, instance of that exam, they were asking prices and I was like, what? Like you don't need to yeah. learn you know, pricing. That's kind of, you know, not yeah. a good idea. I was about to say something that I won't, <laughs> I will regret. So I would just say like, well, it's it, just... Was, it was not the best idea. Mm -hmm. But now in this version, I think it was very honest. They were okay, like, you know, what type of resource could be um, better to make it more budget friendly. Like that could be the closer to price. And that is relevant, you know, when you're trying to optimize your cost, that makes sense. You know, like, okay, like if I have a big VM compared to a little PaaS, then yeah, okay. But uh, I felt it was good. I did study also for it a little bit because, like I said, it's a review. It cover globally Azure, so it's nice doing that. Yeah. Even if you're not the dev or a super tech guy, maybe you're a salesman or you're a manager, doing that, then you will understand better what's happening, why people yeah. are struggling with something. Well, and it is the fundamentals. I mean, it's the basics that everybody should <clears throat> should know with, you know, a little bit of a twist that it's in some cases specifically just to Azure. Um, but it's something that all of us should know. I think that's one of the reasons like we, you know, we knew we needed to take this because like we should know this stuff, you know, and and even down to some of the support support tier stuff, I think is kind of similar question to the pricing. It's like, ah. I, you know, I don't know what the support tier structure looks like, and 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 so I had to actually spend some time learning a few different areas that, you know, if it's outside of monitoring and and building infrastructure and stuff, it's just something I haven't really touched yeah. before. And um, yeah, so I think it's a great place to start. And you know, somebody in the chat was just saying that they were going to take this next um, this next month. So um, we shared the link um, in chat. I think we can do it again here too, but. Um, yeah, so it's showing 99 US dollars for the AZ 900 exam. So, you know, you'll be able to do that for free, right, Frank? Yep. You could, so, uh, and you then, could also and then do on it top of that. from home. Oh, go ahead. I, I did mine from home. And yeah. I just shared the, the cloud channel challenges, challenge. So, uh, who was saying you want to do that? So, Joanne. So, Joanne, if you want to do that, if you're interested, uh, by doing the Microsoft Ignite Cloud Challenge, you have to, uh, to uh, October 15 to do at least one of them. So I just share the link in the chat. If you do one of them, you will have a voucher. So you will be able to have an exam for a certification for free. Mm -hmm. And there's, um, there's <laughs> also already finished learn? four challenges. Like you're a machine, <laughs> that's excellent. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> 
And uh, there's actually some pretty decent learn modules available too that um, they've got down here at the bottom of this, uh, you know, the certification page here. Um, but if you just go into Learn TV and search for Azure Fundamentals, AZ900, either one of those, it'll bring you this this full learning path. It's got 12 different modules. And um, as you can see, I've already worked through every one of these in preparation for that. And uh, it definitely helped. You know, you got to set aside some time to do it because each of them you see, you know, 36 minutes or 45 minutes is kind of the suggested time that's going to take to get through it all. But um, yeah, it was and it was fun. I mean, that's definitely how I got a lot of my points. I'm up to I don't know where you're at, Frank, on your score and, and uh, here, but yeah, you you have more uh, points I'd say than most I do. of this. Level nine was just from pre preparing for this uh, exam. So I will I will need to uh, to catch up because I'm level six, I think. <laughs> Oh yeah, or maybe I did on different account. That possible because uh, I did uh, some. I did share uh, like open parentheses here. Az a lot of uh, learning path. So Azure Fundamentals is a learning path. So we include bunch of modules, and uh, those learning path are also available in different languages. Uh, so I did a video series about how to learn that. Azure Fundamentals in French. Um, so 12 module, I did 12 episodes of one hour each, approximately, all in French. Uh, people really like that because online, when you want in, in a, like a quick fix, it's easier to search in English because you're kind of sure that you will find the information. But when it's time to learn and really master like the tech and stuff like that, uh, a lot of people will prefer their uh, first language. So it's really nice that they have those things available in different languages. And very, very recently, maybe two weeks ago, uh, even the exam is now ab available in French. So that's also very, very cool. Before it was not possible. It was five languages, but French was not part of it. So someone pinged me recently, say, hey, the exam was available in French. So pretty cool. So in the yeah, chat, that's we have a, uh, yep, sorry. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, that it's in these different languages, which is a super cool, but somebody was asking about, um, uh, where did it go with that question? Went. If you can do other uh, certifications or if it's just AZ-900 and it, it looks, after looking at the page, it's not just AZ-900. Oh, no, no, so there's there. plenty of one. Yeah. Uh, the question I saw was from uh, Simbleed was asking AZ900 is good for fresher who want to work at Microsoft as cloud engineer as cloud engineer I think like I was mentioning before AZ900 is good for everyone it's a good one to get started if you want to go and be a cloud engineer you definitely need way more than just Azure 900 uh there's certification for that to become a cloud architect or cloud developer azure fundamentals is just the basic it cover all services but at a very high level like or just the basis so the fundamentals kind of things and then if you want to specialize in the data you could go and go deeper inside uh, those modules and then you can combine those exams uh, and for example to become a Microsoft developer a cloud developer you you will do an exam and then you combine that with a network one and a, like another one then you will have a certification level three and that's three's exam and now you will be an architect so uh, and those are way more difficult to pass but it's worth it because then for your career and just like the exercise of learning is really good. But there's nothing that, you know, block you to just do those modules. I, and I intend to do a lot of those modules to, um, to help me make better content kind of thing. Like understand why, what's, what people are struggling on. Because like I mentioned, I've been doing that for a while. So sometime I don't see what's the problem and like, yeah, just create a pass thing and just upload your code and like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been fun to go through that. And I've been trying to set a goal of learning something out of the learn um, 
learn modules or you know just learn in general like once a week just to try to pick up something I've never you know never had time to mess with like I was I was we were talking last week about different projects we have coming up and what what are some of the things we could do live and I told you though I've you know I've always been able to like look at some python code and kind of make sense of it but I'm not a python developer I'm not going to sit down with a blank slate and write and write some uh, you know python application but I would love to get to that point um, so I'm starting to like look for different resources on just learning Python really from scratch. And, um, I found that there's a learn module in, uh, in Microsoft learn that will do that in, in terms of like intro to Python. So, uh, seems like every subject I've thought of, even last week when we were, we were chatting with Melody, we put in Azure Synapse and sure enough, there's a, there's a learn module in there for it. Yeah, and even last week, let me find it. Uh, yeah. Let me show that and share my screen. And I see the time fly, so I want to then maybe start uh, answering some question we had. And then maybe we'll come back. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. La uh, Ignite, they announce and I like <laughs> they announced the new static web app we talked about it we mentioned it earlier that it's now you can do blazor web assembly inside the azure static web app and the static web app is really nice because it's just html so you could put that in the storage so for a price side is super budget friendly i don't like the like the word cheap because in my mind it's it's had a bad connotation to it but it is very 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 cheap and uh and if you need some power then you could use azure function and those at, this is also a very powerful and very uh, low expensive <laughs> uh, resources and now it all support natively uh c sharp so you could do your Azure function in C-sharp, your web assembly, and there's a learning path for that. So if you want to learn it, I just start reading that. I have the intention to uh, pass through that thing. Uh, and I want to do more and more of that, maybe even on my stream, do that uh, as a good way to validate that nothing is missing and also to learn more about some tech, just like you, Jason, mentioned, like, you know, Things evolve super fast. Uh, like maybe I didn't touch about Cosmo DB for a while. So if I'm going back into that, like you could, you know, you look, say, oh, okay, it's 36 minutes. Then yeah, okay, I can totally do that. And you do it quickly. Uh, I think it could be very, very interesting. So that's a new uh, lore module that has been announced. But yeah, when you browse them, there's you could sort them by product if you want. You could totally search at the top of the screen and you could, you could do whatever you want so you could also do by learning path so learning path will be a series of module on the same topic so if you're interested mm -hmm. going oh i would like to go data or maybe you say oh you know what i am a ai engineer so you have learning path ai engineer and you will have just the module the learning path that are le relevant so pretty yeah. cool and, and also you know if there's a subject in here that you don't see um frank and i are on a team that you know are encouraged to build learn modules or are encouraged to give feedback on um topics that don't exist within learn maybe we wouldn't create it ourselves, but um you know uh, definitely get in touch with us and let us know if there's uh if there's something that's just not in here that you really want to learn about and we'll see what we can do to make that you know make that change yeah and if you see yeah anything that is you think wrong and anything let's let's go back in fundamental i want to show uh, the example uh i think it's at the bottom of the page maybe because i'm not really in one if i go in one for for real Okay, intro. So if you have any problem, you could always report an issue. So while I was streaming in French, 
uh, we saw some part was not translated and like it, and the text was fully in French so uh, we took a screenshot and I used the button just like anyone would have done right and it was fixed in like two weeks and the problem was just I was in French Canadian and that thing was only part like fully translate in French because they did some uh, variants of translation and that's pretty neat I feel uh, between like French French from Belgium French from Canada and like different French so that's pretty cool and you have the same in English also like different version of English available so yeah like if you do that you could just report an issue it will be fixed and it was super quick and after that I was really proud of like hey now it's in French because of my community <laughs> not me but you know pretty cool yeah we got a question uh, is that include um, even just typos and, and kind of smaller grammatical yeah, mistakes anything, and things like I that I think anything you see uh, uh, report it I think and that's true also for documentation I want to do a phase uh, probably this week on my stream where we'll pass through documentation that may need to be refreshed in C sharp and uh, I want to it's been a while since I update some documentation what's the process but at the end everything is in github so it's like you know fixing what you think and then doing a PR on github so this week yeah. or maybe next week I want to do a few refresh of .NET documentation and I was planning to do that so it's very accessible and I think if it's done like you know with uh, how can I say that like with a good mindset uh, like if it's a typo it's just a typo yeah fix it it's totally fine yeah Yeah, it is all in GitHub. Uh, maybe the learning path are in private repos, though. Uh, but documentation for .NET and things like that are even on public. So Microsoft is going very heavily on public and uh, in open yeah. space. Especially, especially with the docs. Like, like um, I think you're right, Frank. I don't think the the learn modules, even though it all works the same way, um, in, in terms of you know, doing a PR to correct something that way. I th think that stuff is still private. Yeah, because uh, it's attached to uh, a few little things after and there's a little bit more in it. But uh, yeah, there it's not. It's a little bit more than, like it's dock on steroid. There's a little bit more than just uh, pure duck. Why? It's a shame, Joan, because uh, it's in private repo decouple the things well it isn't get up yeah, but it's still uh, pretty new but yeah i think my i think it might be one day open sourced a little bit more i mean there's a never lot know, of process but, attached that's probably why well there's a because it's not you know it's building it, it's doing a lot more than just what a docs like rebuild does although yeah it seems like the uh, the number of times how, how many pull requests and and commits are happening on docs is kind of astounding but it's pretty cool that you know, we are able to make some of that stuff available. Yep. Uh, so let's go back to uh, the question we had. Um, on Twitter. Is this one of our Twitter questions yeah. about deploying applications? Okay. So we had one question about... Uh, I lost my track. Where, where I am? Where are you, <laughs> Back to Earth, Frank. Oh, do you want to show your screen? You had Twitter open, right? Um, I closed it already, but let, okay. me, let me get back up. Sharing your screen right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go everywhere. We are going to your Twitter account. Oh, that's a shame. So, yeah, earlier we were talking about uh, AZ900. Um, we had a question about Azure Key Vault. Let's pause that one. Okay, and then the most recent one looks like was Hell deploying Bruno. a local Docker image. Yeah, okay. So it's a good question, I think. El Bruno was asking to deploy a Docker container from his machine to Azure. So there's mm -hmm. multiple ways to do that. 
and there's multiple destination because you could be deploying your container inside a web app, you know, in PaaS. So instead of deploying code, you could be deploying a container because maybe you're, you need some third party, uh, you know, dependency in there because maybe you're using a legacy application or like any, any reason uh, you want to be using a container. So you could be doing that or you could be using it for a Azure container instance. Uh, I use that sometime when I have like, I just want to crunch or do a process. I spawn one container, do the thing, save the output and delete the container. And like, it's super fast, very efficient way to work. Or you could go and in a cluster of Kubernetes, push one more um, container. So just by words, what it is, you need to create a registry, an Azure registry. You could also be deploying it from uh, Docker Hub. I was looking for my words here. Uh, but since you mentioned to Azure, I'm assuming you want an Azure registry. So that's where your definition of container will live. And then when you create something let's say it's an azure container instance you will then create the container instance say okay go pick my image from my library and then it will pull it from there lucky for mr el bruno we already have an episode about that that's with, right with eric the question on um on the container so so will it only work reading it from the Azure container registry or can you still pull from the other registries? Yeah, it will work from anywhere. It's just like yeah. when you're pulling from the Azure registry, it will go very fast because, you know, they are both in Azure and like they, so yeah. And also you, you could have security there. So you could put your own uh, container with maybe some flavor or configuration or something a bit more private. So like it could be a little bit more secure in some scenario, though it could be secure all the way all elsewhere also, just depends mm. on your uh, needs. Right, right. I put the link to this blog in our chat for everybody, but yeah, everybody um, uh, who hasn't had a chance to check it out should go over to blog.allaroundazure.com, which is, I don't know, kind of just an archive for us, really. I wouldn't call it a blog per se. I think it's a little bit of a description about what <laughs> what we talked about along with some of the links that we used and then, um, you know, the replay of the video. Yeah. Well, um, in this, uh, video, Eric, uh, was showing me, uh, and I think he was using go, but you know, it's the same truth is, is valid for, uh, other languages, but creating a container locally. So we kind of wrap up in the container and app and then deploying it two different ways that I just described into Azure. So the, all the step-by-step -step are there in the link also that now Jason is showing. Uh, all the information was also available there. So pretty cool. So episode 18, this is my... Uh... Episode 18, yeah. And I believe, I'm not totally sure. I wanna say we covered it a little bit. I guess we talked about Azure Kubernetes services in episode 24 with Jay Gordon as well. Put that in the chat too. Azure Kubernetes service is one of the topics we went into. So oh, this is, I think, when we were going more into GitHub Actions. But yeah. Um, Episode 18 with Eric, it's uh, all about containers. Yeah, so container. Containers. I have short link for those. <laughs> and I should have, I didn't test it. For the one with Jay. Yeah. Excellent. I try to have short links every time we do an episode. So other question from uh, Key Vault was, uh, 
from uh, my friend Joel. And he was asking about topology. And I was, I was not sure what he mean by topology, so I asked him, and now I'm kind of try to read as I'm talking. Okay, so um, the question was uh, topology, but what he mean is a little bit more all, uh, kind of the architecture point of view. So for example, uh, if you have five application, do you need five key vault? Or should we have only one with all the secrets in it? And I don't think there's an absolute answer into that. And so like the best answer is the favorite of everyone. It depends. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Some of us even have a shirt that says it. It depends. It depends, right? <laughs> it's the best one. I think it will it will depends on like the um, what's the good word for that the scope of every application or how close the application are to each other. For example, if it's a bunch of different application that I created for the same kind of client client. So I'm the owner and I have all those clients. So it's like the connection string for my databases or certificate that for my blah 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 you know like like if i'm the only owner so it's always the same kind of thing i could use only one azure key vault because then like the security is not a problem so you know that kind of if it was different i'm a dev shop and i create solution for different client and of course right away i need a key vault at least by specific client but if you have multiple application and you're using only one key vault, you could say that's cool because now I have all my secret, all my security, everything in one place. That's pretty cool. But then the domain will be heavy on that thing. And you could be throttle or you could have, you know, having the needs to have a bigger instances or like a bigger skew of those things to have a good response. So that's why I'm saying it depends. So like you need to find the best spot to have that. So I think you could share a key vault between two apps. I don't think it's a real problem. Um, I feel like I haven't used key vault more than a handful of times, but to me, I just needed one key vault per resource group because really everything I was already kind of keeping together in a resource group anyway, storage, you know, virtual networks, like all that was just part of resource group. And so, um, you know, I don't know that I've ever had two key vault instances at any one time, but I, I feel like I would still just keep them in a resource group. But then again, that just depends on the use case. It depends on, uh, on the business. So I could totally see uh, a company having multiple key vaults. Uh, and sometimes you say, wow, like I have so many key vaults that, you know, like then it's a problem. So that's why like sometime you could be tempted to regroup a little bit, you know, like if you're just having like one certificate and one connection string and you have six of key vault with the same kind type and just two information, so maybe I should regroup them. So sometime it will make sense. I don't think there's absolute, I never, I didn't ever search though, but uh, I'm not aware of like the best practices for that type of, problem uh, regarding key vault so it's a it's a good one i will definitely have a look or ask around um, but when you do build your application using key vault you need to think about caching your secrets or stuff like that so you're not constantly uh, asking otherwise you will slow down your process or like i mentioned you will be throttled yeah Shut there, there also could just be, I don't know, maybe internal controls in place that say we really want our secrets and our certificates and all that kind of, you know, separated into their own thing. You know, just your own internal governance policies that you've set up. Oh, yeah, that, that could totally be one key vault apart. Just like right. a lot of time, exactly. ops people will have their own GitHub or like secret file, whatever, with the, the password 
for the tool they use and it's not in any app it's not part of the dev environment it makes no sense to be there so like you could totally have a key vault for processes that are like could be covering something yeah so that was also a question we had yeah what else I think that's it in terms of the Twitter questions. Oh, API management. Mm. Call to function, like, oh, wow. <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes, I'm not sure I have the time to cover API management. Do you know what's API management, Jason? Let's just briefly- You're talking ask. about the service API management? It's a service API management in Azure. Yeah. It's a way, let's say you are, uh, you offer services in form of API. Maybe you, you have, you own a lot of data about uh, music and disc and stuff like that. And you would like to build an API so other company could use your API and build different software with that. So you would like to package your APIs with documentation, samples, maybe different packaging with like maybe uh, one free sample where people could do five uh, call of an API every day uh, or, an, or an different price packaging and subscription and stuff like that. So API management will do all that plus managing the security plus the versioning plus there's a lot of things proxying also about your APIs. So it's an amazing tool that could build around APIs when the APIs is something you want to promote as a product or a service. So very, very powerful, uh, big tool, very interesting. But I cannot go deeper and explain the all, all those things are working in 10 minutes. It won't make any sense, but uh, I can explain at least what it is. So that's very high level what it is. Grabbing a link for it. I'll drop into chat here, but um, yeah, I was just I was just playing with it and I was gonna try to create one on the fly. And while you were explaining it, I was able to actually get one deployed here. I don't know if there's going to be much for us to show. An API management? Yeah, I've got, I've got a, just went in and while you were, while you were talking about it, I went ahead and deployed one because I've never used it myself. Oh, See yeah, there? yeah, like, so yeah, it will generate the portal and everything. And now it's true before when I start playing with APIM, so API management, you know, on Microsoft, we like acronyms. So <laughs> APIM is the name, the acronym for this project. It will generate a lot of stuff and a port or like a developer portal. And, and now everything is part of the Azure portal, but before it was another one. So it's really well done now. You could even do DevOps with that and deploy your full portal and everything. So when you have a new version of your API, you want the documentation, the sample, everything to follow. So you could do Azure DevOps and deploy all that, all those yeah. new features. It's and and one, one of the other things I noticed when I was deploying it too, is just like a lot of the stuff that you can deploy in Azure, it almost always will ask you if you want to include application insights. Which is always always for me just like a yes like always check that <laughs> Definitely. yeah um just because you know i love my monitoring i love knowing what's going on with, with things so um but yeah i hear in the quick start they're talking about that too how you can monitor your api with uh, both azure monitor and application insights which i'm sure I, honestly i just love application insights because of the um the application map like it just shows you like every call that's happening and what's going on throughout your entire Entire application, database, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty neat. I'll have to look into a project I can do with that. Is that something maybe we can have to add to our backlog, Frank, of all the different things we, we want to work on together? Oh, yeah. And uh, we can reach out to the PM also. I, I know him. He will be happy to uh, participate or like maybe he has a specific... Um, 
angle it would like us or like a new feature they would like us to demo because something is not present or anything but yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty cool and like i think it's a pro like it's a little bit meta right because it's a project for a projects it's a, a tool for developers so like it's less it's less known or expose if you compare it to azure function for example but i think it's it's very powerful and and useful i can see uh, how yeah so that earlier i dropped i yep. dropped into um chat too we we, we kind of skipped over but you said you had a, a blog post that we actually pulled the link up to that talks a little bit more about docker and some some of the deployment methods there oh, too yeah, so it's a little bit old, uh, 2018. However, the code is perfectly uh, workable. I think today, now, Docker is supported inside Azure CLI. So that's even better. Or or Azure is inside, anyway, like the, they, they kind of merge now. You could do a command to deploy at one point from the other CLI, so it's pretty neat. But all that should work. And I also, I have a video, I think. Um, so if you want to see what I look like to you, to young, younger, two years younger, I have a video at the end, I think. Oh, is this here? Oh, okay. See, even wearing a Docker t-shirt. That's not bad. <laughs> same, you know, same hair and the same glasses. Wow. Okay. I need to change my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't see that my glasses. My wife is always complaining that you know, you should change your glasses. It's been too long. <laughs> oh yeah. So, cool. little video. So for El Bruno or anybody else who would like to get started with uh, Docker, that's a good example. Oh, yeah, it's true. I was struggling with different version and stuff like that. Today it, it will be definitely much easier. But. Um, yeah, I was struggling with different version and tools and stuff. So uh, I decided to document it. That's how I, I start I, blogging, Jason. I was going to say, that, that sounds like exactly just our, our framework for blogging. It's like, oh, I got to solve this problem. Oh, I should document how I solve this problem. Oh, I bet other people would like to know how I solve this problem. Yeah, and now that, and, and looping back to the documentation, that's why I want to do it. Uh, this week or ne next week. This week I would like, I'm not sure because I have a very booked uh, week, uh, but I, you know, we'll see. But um, there's a lot of stuff that instead of, you know, taking the documentation and transforming it in a blog, I should instead be updating the documentation so the documentation works. That's what I wanna sh show, like that's my, kind of goal for this week or next week or something like that to do that a few times to at, at least for, you know come better at it so i'll probably mm -hmm. be part of my even my uh, personal stream i will i think do that not sure yet like i said i need to set up my environment and understand more well, i don't want to confuse more people but um i think that could be interesting Integration of the framework thing wasn't straightforward due to the hosted by. Oh, oh yeah, okay. You saw a thing about the um, key vault. Yeah, depending on what you're using. Cool. So we have five minutes, Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I mentioned I want to raid someone today. So we need to find someone who raids, but uh, yeah, should we share a little bit of our thoughts, plan, have feedback from uh, our viewers about uh, the show, where it's going, like if people are interested for the game or stuff like that, or yeah, well, I think I mean the main <clears throat> the main thing is to let everybody know that we are all ears and that we want to hear from everybody on what's um, what's interesting and what's helpful and what you'd like to learn and not, not just subject too, you know, but uh, how uh, obviously we're, um, you know, coming to you on Twitch and learn TV and, and trying different things and experimenting. Um, but we don't want to just do it, you know, 
just to experiment. We actually want to make sure that we're we're helping people out. And so uh, we've got a lot of ideas for what we plan to this do with the Dr. show Michael. moving forward. And we'd love to hear from people. So I know for me, Twitter is always an easy place to reach out um, and just send me a message on Twitter at Jason Hand. Um, but also, you know, just show up here, you know, Monday and Tuesday. Uh-huh. I think, Frank, right? That's kind of the, the schedule moving forward. Um, yes. Frank's going to be doing Mondays. I'm going to be doing Tuesdays. Tomorrow, I've got um, uh, another cloud advocate uh, who has been on the show previously, Brandon Minnick, and we're going to be talking about serverless and um, really just kind of step two of the stuff we talked about last time, which was creating your very first serverless API. So we're going to kind of take it from where we left off there last week. And then moving forward, we've... we've, um, you know, we're kind of a, a little bit of a clean slate and uh, a green field in terms of the subjects that we're going to cover. And um, that's where we'd love to hear from you. You know, in the next couple of um, shows, join us in chat and just give us your ideas on what you'd like to hear and learn. At least that's what I think, Frank. I don't know if that's what you had in mind. Mostly for me. Well, <laughs> like, you know, want to wanna evolve, want to become better, want to serve the community. There's just so much, there's so much tech out there, I think is the, is the struggle, right, Frank? Like if you just leave it up to us, we'll, we'll come up with all kinds of stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I like to learn new things and and hear from different people, you know, like all the different shows we've been doing, we've been mostly, at least for me, I've been focusing on, on topics that I don't know that much about um, from guests that I haven't heard or seen from too much so we, we love hearing from a lot of different you know people uh both within the community and with within uh, microsoft and just sort of having those diverse ideas and um and all that kind of stuff so want to do more of that also we could i put the link i should have asked before jason but um, <laughs> that link is a form. If you're interested, if you think you have a demo, because like I said, like Jason said, I, I think the same. Like I'm doing this job because I like learning. Um, and we only know what we know. So it's really hard sometimes to go outside of the box and try to learn new things. So I'm always looking for new things to learn and new cool demo and stuff like that so that link should bring you to a page a form uh, to register to be a guest on our on azure so if you have a demo uh, that you can demo in let's say 30 minutes an hour or something like that uh, and you're not afraid to be on a live with us uh, doing some stream fill up the form We'll contact you, we'll have a look to your demo with you, we'll prep you to make sure you're comfortable and you have all your answers. And then you could be a guest on our on Azure. So, and you will be able to share your cool project and teach cool stuff. Uh, so let's go, uh, well, mostly, at the end of the show, I, I prove many times that I cannot talk and type. <laughs> Let's go side by side. So I would like to thank you all for spending time with us today. It was pretty cool. Thank you, Jason, for uh, co-hosting today with me. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. Just doing something something a little bit different. And uh, I uh, love mixing it up and chatting with some new people in uh, in chat there. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. And um, everybody who is also part of the raid, do we have time, Frank, to find somebody else to raid? Or we keep yeah, running short? Yeah, I, I want to go see uh, Gary, or Gep13. He's a my, Microsoft MVP. Okay. And uh, he's part of uh, the team working on Chocolatey and also part of the team working on cake cake is a build engine done in .NET where you could use it to deploy stuff like that and today he's working at solving bunch of different uh, issues 
So it will be interesting. We'll be working on different things. So I think it could be useful. Uh, so let's uh, raid him. Bye, Sounds everybody. Good. Say, right. Stay with us. Say hello to uh, Gary, and I will see you. Oh, Jay is uh, Jason is uh, tomorrow is uh, will be there for you. So. That's right. Same t time tomorrow here on Microsoft Developer Twitch. Come join me and, and uh, Brandon. It should be a good time. Cool. All right. Bye. See y'all.